In this video, this is going to be a beginner crash course in Figma. Who am I? My name is Roy. I'm a UI designer based in the UK. I've been in the industry for 10 years and for two years, I've been using Figma as a design tool and I work with startups and agencies. So if you go to figma.com, you can create an account. It's free. If you go to products and you go to downloads, you can download the desktop app, which I find to be a lot quicker. How can you use your own font? So you've also got the Mac or Windows installer. Switching over to Figma now. Now this is your dashboard. And here you're not going to see anything if this is the first time. But here you've got your area for favorite files and teams once we get into that later. And you can create a new file here. Now one of the things that makes Figma unique and different to the rest now, speaking from experience, I've used Adobe Photoshop a long time ago. I use a bit of sketch. I used to sketch my designs on paper and then actually code it. So I have a background in HTML, CSS and JavaScript. But Figma came along and one of the one of the standout features is the community. So if you go to the community, what they provide is lots of different things. So design systems, templates, plugins. So, for example, one template or framework that I always talk about is Tailwind CSS and the community produces this. You also have the official um, Tailwind CSS styles from the team and it's basically you just get a copy and this will become your own copy. OK, so now we're back in the dashboard and we're just going to learn some of the features. So if we just click on a new file. So I'm just going to call this beginner. And here, this area is where you have your layers and here you can create new pages. Here you have all your tools. And then this area is where you start going into the advanced stuff. So let's start really simple and create a button. So if you hit T for the text tool and click, we're just going to type button. So some shortcuts is you just hit the plus key or the minus key to zoom in and out. So if I click on there, here you can see all the things you can change. So another reason why Figma is so popular is because this feels a lot more modern and it has all the things in terms of modern web design, font size, um, line height, so and spacing as well. So for example, here I want to make this button, let's say 20. I want to go medium, the line height as well. I want that to be a solid. So let's say 20 as well. OK. And then here we have all the colors and you can change whatever you can change, whatever color you like. Right. Oh, looks like I'm clicking right on the edge there. So here you can change the colors. And one massive feature in Figma is auto layout. So let me demonstrate. So you just the shortcut is shift and A. And that will straight away put it in the frame so you can see here the frame and we're just going to label that button. Now the cool thing about this is you have spacing values. So at the moment we don't have another item in there so I'm just going to put zero but now if I was to go here I can say the spacing on the left and the right let's say 32 and then the spacing on the top and bottom is 16. Okay, so we're controlling the spacing very reminiscent to the web, such as padding. So I'm going to actually give this a fill of white and then I can make the border radius, let's say eight. Okay, so we very quickly created a button using one of the most powerful features, auto layout. And then another feature is the components. So if I do command OK, I've now turned this a comp so I've now turned this into a component. And the benefit of a component is you can reuse these if you're just going to save you a lot of time and effort. So now I've created a master component. And the other good thing now is you can start creating variants, different versions. So example, if I go to properties and variant, I might want to see how this looks as a dark version. So straight away I can go here. If I go to variant two 
and I just want to change the fill to black and in the text I want that to be white okay so we've just used auto layout we've used components those are two power features in Figma and in order to use this you can just do the shortcut of shift and I that will bring up your components and then you can search for button so if I click it would then place it just randomly you can drag it out so now you can go to your property I say I want the variant 2 okay so you can also label this a lot better so I say dark okay so we very quickly created a button and I think that is nice and straightforward now the next powerful thing about Figma is styles so if I was to click here I'm just gonna say heading 1 I'm going to say let's make that heading around 40, 40, and I want that to be semi bold. And I also want to adjust the letter spacing. I want a minus two, so I want to make it a bit more tight. Okay. And I want to command D again because I want there to be another heading. So let's say heading two. This time I'm going to go down to 32 and 32 line height. Okay. And then another one is Command D, just drag it down. Command D, I'm duplicating. I want to make this a text, so I'm just going to say text. And let's say we go for 20, okay? So the default on the web is, uh, is normally 16, but we're going to go up to 20. So I'm going to make that regular. So every time you hit the title and you click and you type, you're always going to have to adjust these, but that's going to just kill time. So the beautiful thing, so the beautiful thing about Figma is you're going to create styles. So if I go here, I can go to this four dots and create a style. And in here, I'm just going to say heading one. And the same thing here, create a style heading two and then here I'm gonna say text so the nice thing now is if I was just to hit the T and then type randomly I can now use a text style so currently it is it is using one of them so if I break from it I can then choose any of these three so this is just saving a lot of time and effort when you end up designing a lot of different things so that's another cool thing about Figma is using textiles and the same thing is with color so color if I was to go to let's say frame and just click anywhere so here we have white I'm going to command D to duplicate and I just say we want a dark version so same thing again I can go to the four dots create a color style and I can just say white same thing again, hit, oops, hit the four dots, hit here, and then say black. So now you can see when you click out of any of these items, you can see you have your textiles, you have your color styles. So I can straight away go here and say, I actually want white, even though we can't see anything. So now you've used up some of the main features of Figma. Now the next thing to do is we want to take auto layout a bit further so I'm gonna just command D that frame and I'm gonna you can just drag here and create a size so I'm gonna say around 428 and then let's say that the height is 300 okay so I'm gonna create a card and I'm gonna then just go here and duplicate right so you're just duplicating stuff and we can even duplicate the text as well and the button I'm going to duplicate the button and bring it here so we're going to pretend that this is for an e-commerce site so add to cart and we're going to say that this is 200 we're just going to say headphones Okay, so here we're going to actually place an image 
And there's many ways of doing this, but one of the easiest ways is if I was just to break out of the background, I'm going to add one here and then I'm going to change this to image and choose image. So here I'm gone onto my desktop. It remembers the last folder. So here I'm going to choose a product that I think would be pretty cool to use. So actually I'm going to go to the desktop and then let's choose this one. Okay, so I'm just going to put it up to 100%. So if I was to go back, you can see that this is very similar to CSS where you can say fit, you can crop it, but I'm going to say feel for now. And I'm just going to increase this height ever so slightly. So we can say, we can even actually around there. So 428, 428. We can even label that frame image. So what I want to do now is make this into a card. So the way to do that is I'm actually going to combine these two. So shift A, we can have a spacing of let's say eight. So they're going to be quite close together or let's say 16. I'm then going to combine these two, shift A and Let's leave the spacing as 24. And then we're going to combine these into an auto layout. So shift A. So when you think about it, the structure, again, it kind of represents the web. So I can call this a div. You just th start thinking of frames and auto layout as a div. So here we have the image and then here we have another div, which holds another div which has a heading and a text or a heading in a paragraph. Okay. So one thing to do with auto layout is I can now fill the container, fill the space. I can hit enter, which selects everything inside and fill container. Okay. So one thing here is the button, uh, because it's filled the space is not aligned in the center. So I'm going to just click on there and we can see add to cart. So now you can get really fine with the spacing. So I want to make the spacing a lot less, let's say 16. So now we can call this card. And then the flow of it is you then create a template again, or sorry, a component. So command OK. So now if I just go out, I'm going to command D. This is another way of getting it. And then just shift and drag. So here you have an instance and you can tell by the symbol. This is the master and this is the instance. And I'm going to command the another two times. One, two. And then I'm going to select, hold shift and select the three. And then shift A again. This is all to lay out heaven. So now you can create the spacing between. And now we've got three items, which is pretty cool. And here I'm like thinking, I actually want the spacing between headphones and text to be a lot tighter. So you can go in here in your master component and just reduce it. And you can see it's done it for all the other instances, which is going to save a lot of time. And also here, I want to change this image. So I'll just go here and choose. So let's get a different product. So let's choose this one. And then we choose this one. So you can see we saved a lot of time just using auto layout because of spacing and filling containers and then you just end up creating components and then duplicating instances and this is going to save you a ton of time and effort and the other nice thing is if i was just to command d that now you think about auto layout and fluid so you can see that is not fluid so if i command z to undo i'm going to hit enter so what I want is these three cards to actually fill container. So now if I was to just do that, you can see it's kind of filling, but not everything is filling. So if I hit enter, hit enter again, I want to make sure that everything fills container. Okay. So now you can see the beauty is that auto layout, it gives you that fluid container. So when it comes to responsive design, this is just going to, make everything a whole lot easier. 
And then the next thing is Command D, if you want a mobile layout, you just go stack and you can stack it. This is another nice thing, right? So if I was to hit the F key, you can see all the different frames that they give you. So I'm going to say, um, let's have a, what's the iPhone 13? So that's a 428 width. So here, I can go to this frame, I can give it a weight, a, a width of 428. And then I can also make the spacing between them a bit bigger. So now you can see we've done a responsive design with auto layout just by changing the direction, which is very similar to Flexbox. So again, if you have a background in HTML, CSS, this is, I'm pretty sure this is all going to sync up. Now, another thing that Figma provides, if I was to command you that, is the grid. So now if I was to go to naming conventions, let's just say that this is a section. And now I actually want there to be a grid. So if I go to layout grid and here I'm going to click on these dots, go to columns. Now the most common one is the 12 column layout. And then the margin, I want to be 40 on the left and the right. And then the gutter, which is the spacing between, I want that to also be 40. So if I was to increase that, you can see that is not aligning to the grid. So one way to do this is in this section, we need to replicate the spacing. So on the left and the right, it is also 40. So if I was just to fill this with white, and let's say they're spacing on the top and bottom of 40. So now you can see that this is aligning to the grid, which to me is just saves so much time. So again, if I command D, let's just delete one of these. You can see straight away it is already aligning to a two column grid, right? If I command D again, if I was to command D on these cards, like couple of more time you can see it is aligning to the grid so the sweet thing about this is you're just saving so much time and effort by using these key features and you can see it's not that difficult to use and then one last feature to talk about another reason why figma is huge and it recently got bought by adobe now a big one for me is collaboration so i can actually share this I can actually invite anyone and what that will give the other person is they can start commenting on the work. You can start getting feedback. So I can go here and I can just click anywhere and add a comment. So I like this layout. Hit enter. And then what will happen is they will see this comment and they can also respond to this. So this is bringing collaboration to a design tool and so you can see all the powerful features here it replicates the web pretty well so without waffling on too much hopefully you found this video useful and let me know in the comments because i'm thinking of making a e-commerce website or app design for the next video where we go into more advanced stuff so let me know how you're getting on leave a like leave a comment subscribe hit the notification bell and i'll see you in the next video